Okay, so when working at Axminster, I often let people try out new saws and let them find what the best option is for them. But I've noticed a common pattern in people where they firstly struggle to get the saw to actually start in the cut, secondly, to actually get it square, and thirdly, to get it tracking straight through the wood in the direction that's intended. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some techniques that I learned that helped me tremendously when starting off, and also some things that I've taught other people that I've seen brilliant results from. So, let's go. Right, so first thing I'm going to show you is how to hold the saw. So, coming close. So first thing I notice that people normally do at this stage is they pick the saw up with all four fingers crammed into the handle like that. And that feels incredibly uncomfortable. You can sort of see right now how bunched up my fingers are. That's because saws like this are actually designed for you to hold them like this. Three finger grip with your index finger pointing down the spine. And this helps you keep the saw straight in the cut because your finger is stabilizing that blade. If you have all your fingers crammed in here, you'll see that I'm able to move the blade side to side without moving my wrist whatsoever. Whereas if I have my finger pointed in here, it's much more difficult to move that blade side to side unless I'm moving my entire wrist with it. So having your index finger down there gives you more stability to start with. That's the first thing to do. Secondly, you don't want to be giving this a death grip around the handle. You need to be holding this with firm enough pressure that you don't drop it, but not so much that you start cutting off the blood supply to your fingers. And a good way to show this is like this. If I come around this way, you can see that I'm actually able to hold the saw with just one finger. The bottom of the handle there is gripping on the underside of my hand. And if I point my index finger along the spine like that, that's one finger underneath supporting the weight of the handle. On the bottom of the handle here, that's hooked under my hand. So that's taking the weight of the saw plate. And then my index finger is giving me the forward motion on that. So I could actually cut a bit of wood like that if I really wanted, but obviously gripping it properly is just the normal thing to do. So when I was first told that I was gripping the handle too heavily, firstly, it was an absolute godsend because it gave me an understanding as to why my wrist was cramping up so much when I was trying to dovetail with this thing. The best metaphor I've heard from it is from Chris Schwarz when I was on a course with him a few years ago. And he said, you've got to hold that like you're holding a baby bird. You want to hold it tight enough that it doesn't fly away, but you also want to hold it loose enough that you don't crush it to death, obviously. A bit morbid, I can't remember who said it in that exact way, but that's how I pictured it. So anyway, first thing to fix, your grip. Index finger down the blade, don't hold it stupidly tightly. Next thing we're gonna sort out is actually getting a square cut across the length of timber. Right, so I've taught them how to grip the saw. The next thing we've got to do is show them how to get a square cut. So what I've done is squared line across the top of this timber and squared some lines down the front and done that all over and we're gonna to cut to these lines now. So usually when they're testing out the saws, the first thing that this person will do is start at the back here and drag back. Now, can you hear that sound of it sort of jumping up and down like that. It's sort of like a vibrating sound. What that is, is with these Western style saws, it's actually the teeth jumping up and down like that. And what that's done is obviously created lots of little serrations at the bottom of this cut. So after they've done this a few times, with a Western style saw, obviously you want to push forward to make it cut. If you then put that in here and try and push forward, the teeth are going to sink into those marks and it makes it difficult to start. So this is usually problem number one, and it's what causes you to jump out the side of the cut and just like skim across the top of it like that. Incredibly annoying. Instead, what you want to be doing is focusing on doing a push cut. Let's get a light in a bit closer. So by pushing, you're working with the saw exactly as it's intended, and that gives you, hear it? Smooth cut all the way through like that. And let's switch you through to the other side now, and you can see what I'm doing with my thumb here. So what my thumb is doing here is, is actually resting against the saw plate. Now, on the bottom of this saw, obviously you've got the teeth and they're slightly poked out from the edge of the saw plate. So you don't want your thumb sort of crammed up right against that because it's just gonna put small cuts on there. Instead, make use of the round over on your thumb. Just use the very tip of it to press against the saw plate and then where your thumb curves away, that gives clearance for the curve here. And what I'm doing with my thumb here is it's giving me micro adjust movements along the width of the timber here. So just by slightly rolling it forwards or rolling it backwards, that is what's allowing me to move this saw side to side. So what I'll do is simply put the saw down roughly where I want it and then micro adjust it with my thumb by simply rolling it forwards or backwards. So here I want to cut on the right hand side of the line. So I'm just going to roll it until I get it there and then simply push. You see I'm starting with light pressure for now. I'm not death gripping the handle or anything. I'm pointing my finger down the blade 
and my thumb is actually still there giving it location. If you move your thumb away too early on in the cut, it still has the sort of potential to rock the blade, especially as a beginner if you haven't got that muscle memory. Keeping your thumb there, it just gives you a good point of reference for it. Now let me show you something else here as well. So if I put the saw plate down on this bit of timber and line it up with one of those lines, see the reflection in the saw plate there? Kind of just looks like the timber carries on right through it. However, if I slightly angle it, you see that it's bent the timber. That is a good indication to show you that you're not cutting square if you don't have any lines to work to, for example. You can simply do it by the reflection and just do it by eye and see if that reflection all lines up perfectly. And so here we go, getting in even closer. I want to cut to this line here. Let's say that this is my waist and I want to remove it. So obviously I don't want to be cutting directly on that line because that could be the top of a dovetail, for example. You want to be cutting on the waist side. So I've put the saw on it. I'm going to slightly roll my thumb and then I'm going to move that until I get to the waist side and simply push so again, pushing like that. And what you might notice here is instead of committing to following that whole line to start with, so getting all the teeth on that plate engaged with the material and pushing through, that gives you more points for the teeth to dig in and it also increases your chances of the saw blade sort of skating across it like that. Instead, what I'd recommend you to do, instead of committing to that entire line in one pass, simply angle the saw up a little bit, start at the back, just start cutting, and then start leveling the saw blade out and just blow away the dust as you go so you can still see that line and there we go and unfortunately my lens can't focus this close but you might be able to see that i've left the pen line there and the saw curve is right next to that the other way to do this is starting at the front here again commit to only a small bit and then start tipping the saw forwards and level it out that way both work exactly the same but from what i've seen it's better than committing to that entire cut because your saw is still able to skate all over the place look if i roll my thumb that saw blade is all over the place if I tip it forwards and roll my thumb, it's dug in. I can't, you just can't move that whatsoever. So commit to either the front or back corner and level the saw blade out. And then it will be much easier to follow that line along the top perfectly square. Now, what I will say before moving on any further is that these rules still apply with Japanese saws. You can still start the cut on the back corner or you can start it on the front and level it out. The only thing that is different is that Japanese saws cut on the pull stroke, meaning what I said about using Western saws and starting the cut by doing a few drags back and then it being difficult to start. Japanese saw, of course, you can obviously drag them back to start the cut. That's why these are usually great for beginners because it makes starting the cut so much easier. So the next thing we're gonna do is cutting these lines plumb. So back to the vise. Now, if you watched my video on what saws do you need, this is where gent saws can come and bite you in the ass when you use them, because like I said in that video, when you pick them up, you have the potential of picking them up ever so slightly twisted. So if you follow the methods I just showed you, it's entirely possible to get that line across the top perfectly square. But if you've tipped the blade, obviously not this much, but if you have tipped the blade somewhat, it has the potential to start tracking sideways, even though it feels like you've picked that saw up exactly the same each way. However, if you have a pistol grip one like this, you pick it up, your hand is locked in exactly the same position. So this stage takes muscle memory more than anything. It takes a lot of practice. I would recommend doing exactly what I've done here. Draw yourself loads of square lines along the top and loads of square lines down the front and literally just practice cutting them. The advantage to the method I've just shown you is that you can attack these lines in two different stages. Firstly, you can establish your line along the top and then secondly, you can focus on cutting plumb rather than doing the whole thing in one, trying to get this all lined up at the top while also making sure you're gonna go perfectly plumb. Do it in two stages, then you have less to think about. Now we've got one line here that I haven't attacked yet. So let's get a light to start with. <laughs> Oh, it's getting so dark in here. So first thing we're gonna do, get this line established along the top. Oh, that's so much better. So I'm cutting on the left-hand side here. So let's call this side of the line the waist. Angle the saw up. Obviously tilt my thumb to move that blade laterally and then start cutting. So I'm blowing away the material as I go. So now I can see that line being established. And there we go. The line along the top is now perfectly square. And now the only thing I need to focus on is cutting plumb. Now let's look at actual sawing technique here. So when you're sawing, what you want to do is make sure that your elbow, your wrist, and the front of your saw plate is all in line. If you start cranking your elbow out like this, you're gonna sort of want to start going off at an angle and do sort of all sorts of weird things. So firstly, make sure that elbow is in. Now obviously that's just hit my body, so that implies the next thing you need to do. You need to move over like this. So now I'm moved to the side, my elbow, wrist, and the front of the saw is all in line. And what I'm doing is I'm looking over the blade and I'm looking at either side of the saw blade and the offset of my eyes is allowing me to see that side of the cut and that side of the cut. 
it takes a while to sort of get your eyes to adjust to it. It looks incredibly weird to start with because it's like you're purposely not focusing on something. When you're establishing this line along the top in stage one of getting a square cut, I generally move to the side and just really focus in like this. So I'm not looking on this side because that's going to be my waist. I'm just watching that line as I lower the blade down. But when it comes to actually cutting plum, I will shift over. I'll look at either side of the blade, get all of my limbs in line and then simply cut like this. Now, like I said before, you only need two fingers to support this saw. Your index finger to point it in the right way and the one underneath. All the others, I can take off the handle. Light pressure, it's still cutting. Now, this is quite a thick bit of material and this dovetail saw is on its fifth year since I bought it and I still haven't sharpened it yet. So it is cutting a little bit slowly, but just don't be tempted to start really pushing down. Yes, it will cut quicker, but you're going to start bending the saw plate and I can already see that has started wandering across on my line. It's a bit annoying. But look, hardly any of my fingers are engaged in the handle. The only thing that's pushing it into the cut is the weight of the saw and also this hook here where it's pushing into my hand. That's giving it a bit of downforce as well. And so there we go. That is how you saw correctly. So quick recap. Do not death grip it. This handle only needs two fingers support on it, plus the support from the bottom of your hand, and then there you go, that is fully supported. Point your index finger down the blade like that, and that will give you the right direction in which you're cutting. If you cramp it with all four fingers, then it's gonna be wobbling all over the place, and you're gonna get blue fingers, because they can't breathe. In terms of starting the cut, with regards to Western style saws, do not drag them back, because they'll start bumping up and down, and then that'll make it even more difficult for you to get it started. If you do want to drag it back, consider trying a Japanese saw going into store and giving one of those a go because they are great for beginners. And also when squaring the cut line along the top, work from the back to the front or the front from the back. Do not work perpendicular to the top because you have more potential to scoot the blade side to side. Also use your thumb to support the blade on the side to help you locate it in the right place. And when it comes to the actual sawing, make sure that your elbow, wrist and saw blade is in all alignment. Is in all alignment? Is in alignment, we'll go for. So make sure that's going all the way through the cut nice and straight. If you crank your elbow out, it's just going to scoot sideways. And what else? Don't push down too hard. Obviously, that comes into the whole death grip thing. Just a light touch. Let the saw do the work for you. That's pretty much it. At the end of the day, what this takes is a lot of practice. You're probably not going to get it straight away. If you do, credit to you. It took me bloody ages to get this all worked out. But you're just going to have to do exactly what I've done here. Draw loads of lines and just keep cutting to them. Occasionally, you will have off days with them. I still have off days after five years, but it will improve over time and it will become a lot more natural to you. What's important is getting the groundwork down now so that you enforce good habits as you progress. So anyway, hope that helped. Let me know if you have any questions at all in the comments. Obviously, post your opinions below. I will try and reply to as many of you as possible and I'll see you, I should really not do that, in the next video.